Hi, I'm Loli, and I'm so glad you are here. Let's start with this glass base from Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and use also some of this rope as well. And I'm going to use this half first that I had left over from another DIY. Using some hot glue, I'm going to start gluing it on the very best base of the vase. And I'm doing it here standing up to make sure that I am not gluing the rope a little bit too far up in which things will be unstable. So here I'm just making sure to do it on here so everything is nice and even and the vase is sitting correctly on the tabletop. Once I got to the end of the rope, I'm going to start the next rope where the other one ended. And I just, what I did was I just cut it very straight and then put all the bristles together. They have it nice and flat so it has a nice seamless transition from one rope to the other. And I continued winding it up until I got all the way to the top. Here at the very top, I'm going to add hot glue a little bit closer inward from on top of the rope where that rope and the base meet it together. And I went all the way around until you no longer can see the edge of the glass. Once I got there, I'm going to go ahead and cut the, the rope, but I'm going to cut it towards the bottom of the rope in an angle upward. That way I have a nice seamless look at the end here. Just makes everything look nice and level. And I'm just going to show the add glue right there at the edges to make sure that that rope stays together and it has a nice seamless hold as well. And this is what we got so far. I'm going to take my lighter and I'm going to go ahead and cinch up all those little hairs from the rope until this is nice and clean. Then I'm going to go ahead and smack it around <laughs> a little bit just to remove all the excess little pieces that still stay stuck onto the surface. And then I'm going to take the remainder of the rope, I'm going to cut it nice and straight as I did before. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of angle here, but I'm adding, making sure I add a little bit of hot glue in between all the bristles, then putting them together right there so they're nice and formed, and then cutting it nice and straight so I'm able to unite two edges seamlessly. So what I did to this side here, I'm going to do it to another side as well. Once I cut the piece to be the opening to my beehive, I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to one of the edges. And I'm going to hold them together, trying to keep them as equal as possible, as even with each other as possible. So it looks like a round or a circle and you can barely tell where it was united together. Once it was nicely formed, I'm going to come in with some of this black paint from Anita's and completely cover that rope. Now it's time to go ahead and attach it to my beehive. So I'm going to just measure it to see exactly where I want it. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to the front. My friends, if you enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up. Okay, now I'm going to add some more of the black paint to that opening of the beehive. I'm just using a generous amount of paint right there. I'm just using a brush. I'm going to make sure to get it in between every single nook and cranny of the rope. Once it's dried, I'm coming in with some of this hot glue. It's gold hot glue from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to add it all around the opening of the beehive. I just want this to look as if it's honey just dripping out of the hive. So I'm just trying to just let it like fall where it wants to. So it looks nice and natural. So I added it to mostly to the bottom. And then I'm going to also go around the entire opening of the beehive. But first, I'm going to add one of these little bees to that section right there before the hot glue dries then i'm adding more hot glue around the circumference or the perimeter of the opening as well and now it's time to add some more little bees here and there and just figure out exactly where to put them and i decided to put one right there i'm adding hot glue to glue them on these come with little puffy pieces underneath but i'm deciding to add hot glue because it doesn't always have the same hold and I want to, I didn't remove it either because I wanted it to be a little bit raised off the surface. Then I decided to use some of these little sunflowers that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to go ahead and cut them off their stems. And I'm going to add this one at the very top of the hive. And I'm gluing it using a little bit of hot glue. If you enjoyed this video so far, I would really love it for you to join the family and subscribe. My goal is to reach 2,000 subscribers by the end of this month. Please help me achieve my goal. Thank you. All right, guys. So here I'm taking a smaller of those little paper sunflowers from Dollar Tree and I'm adding it a little bit 
further down from the bigger one and I'm going to continue to do this all the way down and I'm going to be slanting each one of the flowers a little bit further out until I go completely around the opening of the beehive and all the way down to the base of the vase. But in the midst of it, I decided to add some leaves as well. So I'm just adding some leftover leaves that I have from my previous DIY. This is just from that little garland piece that you see there. I'm just going to add some of the leaves it towards the back section of the biggest sunflower just to add a little bit more interest to it. And this is how we're looking like so far. And back to the sunflowers, I continue gluing them all the way down until I got to the base of the vase. Then I added some sunflowers into the vase. I got these from Hobby Lobby. They were on clearance 90% off, so I actually paid a dollar for them instead of $10.99. And look how beautiful this turned out. My inspiration for this piece is here from this Southern Girl can, and this is her version. It came out stunning. And here is my version. I hope you like it. Leave me your thoughts in the comments. All right, my friend, today's video is part of the Recreation Inspiration Challenge that is hosted monthly by Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun and Charlene from the Crafty R Shack. And the guest host this month is Tammy from Happiness Created. The links to their channels and to their playlists will be linked in the description box below and also pinned in the comments. Make sure to head on over to their channels and to their playlists and show everyone some love. For the next inspiration this evening, I'm going to use one of these eggs that I had left over from Easter and I'm going to use some of this rope as well. I actually ended up using one and a half bundles of rope. I started by removing the tape that was at the edge of that rope and I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue in between all the bristles right there and then I'm twisting the rope in the same direction in which it is twisted naturally and I'm going to seal the end and then cut off any excess. Then I'm going to just go ahead and loop the end against itself on here, making it nice and tight so I can use this at the very top of my egg. I added some hot glue at the top to hold it in place and then I kept wrapping it using hot glue in every single time that I went around, making sure to leave no spaces in between the rope. And I continue doing this until I wrap the egg two thirds of the way down. At this point, I ran out of rope, so I'm going to start a new one by removing the tape, adding some hot glue, and making the edge nice and flat. I'm going to start right against where the last rope ended. Once I got it to this area right here, in which the egg started tipping down again, there is where I stopped. So I'm going to take my scissors, go ahead and cut off that excess piece of cord, and we are going to tack it down. Using a metal ruler from Dollar Tree, I'm marking off where I need to cut off the excess egg. And then I came in with my X-Acto knife and using that pattern, and I just went over and cut it that section. And then came back in with the metal ruler one more time to completely cut it off. And this is how it's looking so far. Then I'm going to take one of these rings that I got from Dollar Tree, and I painted it black. Then we are going to attach the ring to the bottom section of the beehive. But first, I had to burn off the fuzzies. And then we are going to glue that ring to the bottom section of the beehive. Now it's time to color in the inside and I just added some more of that black paint and put it right through there. I should have really left the ring its natural color, but I, I don't know. There's a reason I wanted to make it black. Then I took some felt from Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and cover the bottom of my beehive using that. I want to take a quick moment to say thank you to my subscribers for subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing. All these things help me tremendously. They help my channel grow and I appreciate you very much for them. And if you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe and join the Lolly Dee's Creations family. It is free and it means the world to me. Well guys, as you see there, I just trim off the excess using my scissors. I use this scissors and my detail scissors until you no longer can see the felt from the size of the hive. 
Now here comes my favorite part, it's time to embellish this. So I'm here trying to decide exactly what I'm going to use. So I decided to use one of these sunflower flowers from Dollar Tree. And we are going to glue this on the very top of the beehive. Then I took some of the smaller ones and I'm going to go ahead and add it a bit lower than the bigger sunflower. If you enjoyed the video so far, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Sharing is caring. And it helped me share my content with even more people. Now it's time to add some bees. I'm just going to add some hot glue to the back of the bees and add them in different positions. I'm going to add this one right underneath the flowers. I'm going to do another one right at the opening at the beehive. And we're going to go ahead and put one on the other side to eliminate some of that negative space on the other side of the beehive. And look how cute this has turned out. This is my inspiration piece. It was done by Robin from Craft and Lease by Robin. Make sure to check out her channel. She is so talented. And here it is, mine all completed. Let me know what you think. Let's go with the next inspiration. This next project was inspired by Krista from Krista's Crafty Life. And this is the project that she made. I found this so clever and I wanted to do something with stencils. For my project, I'm also using the hexagon that she used, but I painted the frame using this maize color from Waverly. I then took this stencil that I got from Timu and I'm going to go ahead and place it right on there. I'm going to place it towards the bottom to make sure that those wings fit nicely in there. And I'm just going to secure this in place with a piece of tape. Then using some white paint and a dauber, I'm going to go ahead and stencil this bee right onto that black surface. And this is the moment of truth. Uh, it came out okay. There were places where I had to scrape off any excess um, paint that kind of bleed through. I just scraped it off with the edge of a skewer. And any places in which there were any gaps, I filled it in with a small paintbrush. And look how cute that's looking already. But I'm not done yet. I'm going to use the stencil that I got from Timu. And we're going to position it over that frame. I made sure to tape it down before going over it with some of this rich black paint from Bogart. As I was done with one section, I was very careful to remove the stencil very carefully and reposition it, trying to match up the little hexagons into each other until I completely covered the entire frame. Then I took some of this honeycomb ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm going to do a crisscross effect as you see right there i'm going to scrunch it in the middle and i'm going to use a little piece of wire to wrap around the middle there to cinch it in place and i'm making sure to lead the wire towards the top of the bow then i repeated the same process with another piece of ribbon that has sunflowers on dollar tree and now i am attaching it to the other bow using the wire that i have left in the front now i'm just making sure that it's nice and tight and then we are going to flip that to the outside and dovetail both of our ends. As I dovetail it on my ends, it's like just going ahead and folded it in half longwards and cut the upward triangle to have like a fishtail look to my ribbons. Then we're gonna attach it to the top portion right there with some hot glue. And that is it for this one. Nope, never mind. I'm going to complete it with a little B in the middle of the bow. And now we are done. And let me know what you think about this piece. And here we go with the final reveal. As always, don't forget to let me know which one of these is your favorite. And if there's anything different that you will do. And if you plan to recreate it, please let me know as well and send me some pictures. I would love to see them.
my friends as always thank you so much for watching be blessed be a blessing and craft responsibly and if you would like to follow me on social media here are my social media links and don't forget to visit my friends in the playlist if you would like to watch some more of my videos here's a suggestion and you are more than welcome to binge away with this playlist as well thank you so much for spending time with me today you're amazing bye